What a absolute disaster in wiring that is. We should really get on fixing that. But not today. Dan here, TD Speed Shop. Um, so we flip flop and back and forth between projects, but Nomad, man, this thing is cool. So we got motor in, runs, transmission in, transmissions, doesn't make a bunch of noise somehow when it revs up in idle or in uh, neutral. So we do have to change that radiator and all that, but that is not what's happening today. Today is a fun one. We've been waiting on that four nine inch. Uh, so I ponied up the money, called the guys at uh, Quick Performance. So let's get out of the way real quick. It's a four nine inch, I guess not a Chevy. And I had recently, just out of happenstance, a 12 bolt Chevy rear end came up on Marketplace and I did buy it. And all, honestly, it's like the exact same <laughs> as this. But, at the, it, this is life, at the time, that wasn't available. Now, um, the reason I went with this, I mean, I, I was looking locally, I had want ads up, nothing was coming and I was just like, got down the wire and it was, Fancy, you know, small block Chevy with the five speed and a stalker in, which probably would have got us through power tour and cruise around and all that sort of stuff. But I know myself and I'm gonna to wanna to beat on this thing. So that's not the plan for this. So I had the wand hat up. I was looking for a 12 bolt or a nine inch or a you know, Dana 60 or whatever. Nothing was coming up. I did have a 12 bolt. I priced out getting it rebuilt. It was gonna be like well north of $3,000, $3,500 between shortening it and getting the gears. Like it just, it was basically starting fresh. Priced it out locally, all the pieces and parts were gonna be a fortune as well. Now, my buddy Josh, who has 55 Chevy Gasser, and my buddy Dave Newburn, who has a 57, the Krusty. It's a 57 with the big block, six speed. It also has a nine inch. Both those guys bag on it, and I was like, you know what? I'm kind of trying to recreate what they have. Called up Newburn, he gave me the number. Uh, buddy Ashton at Quick, and so I gave him a call, so I gave him a call. And this is what we decided on, so yeah, Quick Performance. Thanks for, thanks for taking my Visa card. Man, they took the money like that. So what we ended up going with was a Ford 9 inch. It's the some sort of upgraded version. I think it's good for 600 horsepower. Um, I narrowed it a half an inch from stock. So it's actually the exact same width as a first gen uh, Camaro or a 6870 or maybe even later Nova. So 59 and a half. It is set up with the, so we can put on factory tri five brakes. So that's gonna be nice because I have brand new brakes on this thing. So peel those off, put the new ones on, then the e-brake, all that'll just work like factory. We went with a 410 uh, limited slip deal. So I was thinking about going with a, a higher gear ratio, like a 430 or even more than that. But I was like, you know what? Let's be honest, the 410 is probably the way to go, and that's what they kind of convinced me to go with, so I think that should be good. Um, came with a few things, these base plates. So we got that, and I don't know what the axles are, but they're all good, half inch studs, the whole deal. So it should be a sweet little number. Now, what was I gonna say there? I've lost my train of thought. Anyways, we gotta paint this thing up, so unfortunately that's job one. I'm gonna give it a quick coat of back paint, I think we're gonna put the set of the uh, the rear end in bare, and then start assembling once it's in the car, just because it would weigh next to nothing. We'll put the studs in, but otherwise that's the way to go. Oh, these wheels. So I'm I'm iffy on these wheels. I'm not gonna lie, and this is where you guys get to come in. So originally for this unit, I when I put that big Holly order in, I ordered a set of Rocket Racing rims as cast. They're uh, Rocket Launchers, maybe I forget what they were. Anyways, they're pretty cool, but uh, one got sent, and at the end of the day, I talked to the Holly guy, they're, they're changing the casting or the uh, the molds, or whatever, uh, the tooling, that's what I'm looking for. And they didn't know when they were gonna have another one in, blah, 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 so he's like, let me make it up to you. The only thing we have in stock right now, we can sell right away, is these way too fancy Halibrand jobbies. So I got these instead. So these are your, whatever they are, 15 by four and a half El Fancios. So we'll see. Um, I joke with the guy, I said, hey, I might tarnish these up because they're not coated. So maybe we'll ruin them. What do you think? Should we ruin a brand new set of wheels and suit the patina of this thing? Because um, obviously we're going to run those in the back. And uh, I think these tires are going to go good. 28 by 7s. So it should be a nice little setup there. 
I think I'm gonna run a set of steel wheels and truck tires on the cruise down because these Mickey Thompsons will melt themselves down to nothing. So I need to find like a you know, 30 tall LT tire, which is nothing. I'll go from there. So the tubes are three inch tubes. So it's got bigger U-bolts. Just everything around is stronger. And ultimately the weak link for horsepower is the motor. The, the top end should be good. The exhaust is good. The, you know, the clutch, the transmission, the rear end, everything is rated at like, you know, 600 horsepower, you know, in that range. So hopefully we should be good. I'm going to get this thing brake cleaned off real quick. I'll probably just stand it up, fog it black and we'll have to let that dry. And then, uh, like I said, put the case in, start working. I'm really excited to get this together. Make sure all my measurements worked out and, uh, Put these wheels and tires on have it sit on the ground again then we can measure for a drive shaft that is the key unfortunately this friday night so not a huge rush but i'd like to get it in and then for monday we'll have a drive shaft measurement ready to go get that in a couple days maybe we can drive this thing next day i got it all painted up uh, a little flare a little bit of pink on there just for fun so i let it sit for a whole day i wanted to make sure it dried i'm not messing around with it now my thoughts are when we're putting this together is we'll put the housing in the car first and then we can uh, you know put the center section in we got to put some uh, the studs in it put the axles in do all that we could do it on the bench or on the floor or whatever but I thought you know what let's put it in the car we can work on the lift life will be easier I'm hoping uh, you know hoist center section all that sort of stuff now the one problem I ran into is I don't have U-bolts and I did that to myself because they asked me what I wanted for U-bolts. The tubes on these are three inches so they come with new pads on the bottom. A factory tri five is two and a half so the existing U-bolts will not work. Um, I don't know if I can do something there anyways but I didn't know I was running these two inch drop locks which I'm not a huge fan of I will admit but I like the, the look of it. So we got to decide if we're going to pull leafs out or maybe just put it together, see how it sits, see how the tire fits, do all that sort of stuff. And, and then we'll kind of go from there. So step one, housing in, then we can start putting in some seals, do what we got to do. We might just ratchet strap it together or whatever for now. And uh, yeah, keep kind of carrying on. I've never done this before, but again, how hard can it be? Ugh. Oh god. Oh jeez. This thing feels like gas. Oh. Feel that? That's not good. What is There's a hole in the top of the tank? Why would that be there? Okay, anywho. Let's get this together. Oh, are these not really together? No, they're close enough. Oh, the leaf spring's perfect. What? Oh, the leaf's got to come in. Man, this rear end is like as heavy as a complete Tri-5 junk. What am I going to do here? Beautiful day outside. Okay, so we got the rear end uh, in. I just ra I put zip ties on to hold it. And I ratchet strapped it so it ain't going anywhere. I then just put the studs in. I pulled them in uh, real quick. That's pretty simple. I mean, it's just a, it's a fine thread nut. Stack of washers, pull it in and you're done. Here are these beefy axles. And this one has a couple of uh, seals on it. So I guess we'll have to. Oh, that's, that's the deal there. I guess he's. Oh, just bash him in there. I see. So we'll have to smack of those in. No big deal. And then over here, we'll try and muscle this in next. This thing is not light. This is our fancy deal. Oh, ah, it's all the money. So, boys, a quick performance. Whip this up. And sent it out, took about a little over a month, I guess. And I had her, so it's pretty exciting. I've never had a fancy rear end like this, but apparently it should be good. There's so many new parts on this thing. I also feel like I'm more uh, worried about all the new parts than I am the used parts. I'm so used to just putting junk together, I never had this amount of nice stuff. Now, there was no gasket. I think I'm just going to silicone it in. Try and heave it on there. It's 
gonna be a little awkward, but uh, well, that makes for good TV. So I'm gonna try and put this rear end in. The car's in a funny spot because it's kind of too high for me to sit on my butt, but it's also too tall. No, it's just bad. It's all around bad. <laughs> you gotta get your, your slots in. Hopefully you guys enjoy heavy breathing. Your phone. Maybe I can sit. It's on that the. Dangerous. I feel like I'm doing a wall sit. <laughs> you haven't done one of those in a long time. High school was a long time ago. <laughs> oh! Oh, this is gonna be something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, that's step one. This is just awkward. Oh, oh shit. Ah, oh, it's on my shirt. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> Bugger. Okay, gentle. Oh. Well, I can still see. This is not going on. What's going on here? Everything is in my way. Oh, there we go. No, maybe not. What? Uh, I don't know how this is my fault, but it is. Why is this side not going on? I don't really understand. Just stuck in one of those studs, I guess. Oh, man. This is some riveting, riveting TV. Holy moly. Between the, uh, I got some strong legs. Are you impressed? <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be all them chicky nuggies. <laughs> I don't think it's a diet. I better put one nut on here just so it can fall off on me. Whew. Honestly, I thought this was going to be more pitiful to watch. Oh, I appreciate that. You impressed me. Apparently they sell a reusable gasket, which I should have bought, but what are you going to do? Okay, well I think that's, I think that's on there. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go lie down for a minute. Uh, whew, that was good. I hope that we don't have any problems with this. Cause this, like this section was heavier than a whole friggin' Tri-5 differential altogether. Okay, I'm gonna zip this in real quick. We'll get back doing the easy stuff. I hope. I'm not gonna lie. I am feeling that in the legs, but uh, I guess heavy means good, right? So we got it in, I just uh, ran all the bolts in. Everything looks pretty good. I don't think we'll have any issues. And uh, yeah, anyways, we're gonna put these axle seals in. Um, I like to put a little silicone on it. Didn't, some people are kind of hit and miss on that, but that's what Murr always told me to do, so. I just have this as a ball joint spacer for like a press deal. It just kind of grabs the edge of it. Just try and make walk it in so it's somewhat level or straight.
this thing gets stuck in here because it's the exact right size. Come on. Perfect. She's in. So now I gotta get the brakes. We'll put those on real quick. I have, I think I have a set of tri five brakes. So these are meant to have factor tri five drums on it, which is fantastic. So I should be, I think I have someone just sitting actually in the backyard. So the snow is melted, I can get them. Slot them on. So, ah, we got our uh, slick little setup. So the way this works, you have your studs in the housing and then it comes with these little, well not a little, they're kind of long bolts for the, the housing. So these are gonna hold on the brakes and they hold in the axle once you knock it in there. I'll show you that in a second. I probably should have loosened these first, eh? Maybe we should do it on take, on take two. But uh, yeah, so these will go in. Then we'll put the, the brake, come on, the brakes on. And this can go over the axle or bearing whatever and holds it in. So. Huh. Let's go from the bottom. So those go on like that. I guess that's how it's gonna, yeah. So once the axle is in, go up. That'll hold it in, maybe. Ah, oh God. Now I'm pretty sure the passenger side is the long side, I think. What's going on here? Struggle, struggle. There we go. Oh, you know what? I like to put just a little bit of silicone on that little O-ring. I don't know if any of this is right or wrong, but this is how I've done those Tri-5s, and I haven't had a leak or a problem. And a lot of Tri-5 guys did it. And even though this is a Ford 9-inch, it's very similar to a, uh, a Tri-5 diff. Hey, if it's wrong, I'm sure someone will be nice and let me know in the comments. Very cheery like, right? So put this in and then I should just knock it on the hammer. I'm thinking. I get it all. Okay. Feels pretty snug. I feel I feel bad knocking this uh, this axle in. Oh, there you go. You just heard it. She's dead in there. Those all back doing their dealio. Slip this up in there. Man, I gotta say those guys know what the hell they're doing. Welded on. Uh, Try five flanges, yeah, yeah, no problem, use the old brakes. Save you a few bucks, perfect. Now this one, everything works. We do have the e-brake cable. I did store these outside, that was not the smartest. But uh, the other side has the cable on it, and then actually the rear end that came out of this, even though they're rusty, there were brand new drums on it, so we'll scuff those up, paint them black. We got ourselves a freaking hot rod. I did measure the drive shaft. This one is going to be shorter, which is good. So I've got to cut basically four inches out of that drive shaft. Um, the front yoke will stay the same, so it's the same as what's going on there. And then the back, we'll, we'll take it out of there and put a 1350 style yoke on it. So it'll be Ford Ford, and then I, it's actually Ford Ford in the front, but it's a weird, I don't know, C6 or something like that. So it's a little different, and we'll be dialed. So I'll button this up. And then, realistically, maybe we'll, I'll show you how I measure the drive shaft real quick, just so everybody knows, in case you have to be doing something along these lines. We can run new brakes. You know what? I actually want to show you something here. Might, another thing I might run into. So that bar that goes across for the shocks, 
that's how much space we have. Now this is a bigger housing than that one by a little bit. And if we end up putting the two inch blocks on this, it'll be two inches higher, plus there's no weight on this, we might run into an interference there. So I might be having to weld a piece on the top and cutting it out or doing something, doing something differently. I'm not really too sure what, but I'll Google it. I'm not the first guy to do these things. So obviously it, uh, it has been done before. And also this thing doesn't have any bump stops on it. They're usually sort of stops right there. So maybe that's just what I really need. I wonder what happened to those. I'll figure it out. So, status update. Brake drums are on. I have it sitting on the floor jack. It's actually off the back of the lift so I can tighten the uh, shocks or the shackles, sorry. You wanna tight those, tighten those up when they're in the middle of the swing. We have lots of room for the diff there. Um, Murr was over, so I, it's always nice talking stuff out with him. So I do wanna have this thing sit lower. I like the way it sat before with those two inch blocks. Now, in all reality, we're gonna be cruising this thing with all of our gear in it. So I think what might be the best to do is just put it together stock. And then when we have spare tires and tools and a full tank of fuel, our luggage, who knows what else we're bringing. There'll be, you know, two, three, 400 pounds maybe in the back of this thing, which will probably give me the look I want. So the last thing you wanna do is have it slammed where I want it, and then we load it full of junk and it don't work, like I put air shocks in it or whatever messing around there is. So we'll do that and we'll just see how it looks. It might not look as cool as I have in my head or what I kind of made it look like. Definitely uh, Nomads kind of have a bit of a stink buggy kind of look to them. These are big tires. The next thing we're running into, these tires will not fit, well, I mean they will, but with this lip right here, so I'm fighting out the proper way of doing it. If I should kind of cut it at an angle and just fold the whole thing in a little, if I want to do that right now or what I want to do, or if I should just kind of cut it right off. We have lots of space. I mean, there's that much room before we're hitting the inner, inner tub. So you can really radius them. Cause this is the exact same tire I have my 55 when I radius the wheel well. So they fit fine. <laughs> I guess anything fits fine with a grinder. But I do uh, want to maintain this look as much as possible, and I kind of like that lip. So we'll set the camera up, and I'll just start butchering this. I might just kind of cut it out at a bit of an angle, and then we'll we'll mess with it after. We have a welder; we can fix it all. Okay. Well, I think I'm just gonna zip the corner off. The uh, my ratchet straps holding the diff down aren't exactly uh, super strong, but. We redid it. I'm not gonna lie, that kind of hurt. This quarter panel was like $1,500. Let's see what happens. Uh, whew. I don't have any lug nuts, but I do have one half inch uh, nut, fine thread, and really half inch studs on whatever these are. There ain't a whole lot of movement anyways. We'll just see what happens. In theory, it's hanging. So that's as far forward as it should go. As we put weight on it, it should go backwards, I think. So I'll do the other side and see what happens. I don't hate it. So that's where the wheels are sitting now. I have one nut on that side and I have nothing on the other side. So precarious. Um, Obviously before, which I really did like, the wheel was tucked up in, which I do think looks cooler. So now we got, you know, a little bit. Um, we might have to do a little more, a little more trim in there. But that's all, you know, that's future Dan problems. Uh, same on this side, I actually put the block. It's kind of tucked in there so you can kind of see. It's at an angle actually, if I put it upright, you actually can't see all of it. So, you know, it's a little higher, but everything seems, 
pretty decent. Do I have a light charged? And I don't. But underneath, don't go under a car with no lug nuts on it, guys. This is kind of, you know, not great. Well, there's no light there, but I can fit my thumb between the wheel and the leaf spring on both sides. And again, these are radials, so they should be just fine. Now I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead there and measure up the drive shaft real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jack it up and put it on floor jack, or uh, jack stand, sorry. Get that measurement, get that hopefully cut tomorrow if I can. Hopefully I get the one day service. And then at the end of the video or whatever, we'll put the drive shaft in, pump the rear brakes. I'm gonna put a different set of wheels and tires in this thing. These wheels are actually have to be drilled out or something. And I gotta get special lug nuts, half inch studs and all that, as you can see. So I gotta figure that out, but they do fit. I have a set of chrome reverse, and my plan is put the chrome reverse on with just a set of like a, a tall LT truck tire almost for the back. Same diameter because when we're rolling down these things on the highway, I think they'll just melt. So we'll have a, uh, a traveling tire, which will also be our spare tire. It's essentially ride height. I think it looks pretty good. Still has nose high, which I do enjoy. So I'll be back in a day or so. Oh, let me think about these wheels. Are they too shiny? Let's be honest here. Does this suit DD Speed Shop? Man, they're fancy. It's just gonna be. So, um, drive shaft. I went down, dropped the drive shaft up this morning with my buddy Ryan, don't worry, transmission. Love the guy. Great guy. I gave him the measurement, which I thought was right. Wasn't right. So I could probably get the drive shaft in just barely, but it would be like hammered up against the transmission and stuff like that. So I'm upset with myself because there's a few issues and I mean, I don't wanna call them excuses because it's what happened, but I didn't have the rear end bolted down. It was strapped down. So I think there was some movement there. Um, I did a bunch of screwing around trying to get weight on the car, which was kind of sketchy. I did a lot of that actually off camera, but because I had the rear end strapped to the leafs, but uh, obviously when you're putting the weight on the car, you're pulling the differential away from the leaf and it was strapped out just like these 500 pound ratchet straps. So I didn't want to be under it in any way. So I had floor jacks and oh, it was just, it didn't go well. So anyways, um, the dry shaft needs, I mean, not much, a half inch cut out of it or three quarters of an inch. We could get it in and it would have maybe a quarter inch of play, which just isn't really enough and it's all sort of screwing around. Also, I've never used these really big, um, it's got 1350 caps, which that adds more, I mean, because it's a bigger cap. So I've decided to punish myself and do all the things that I didn't want to do. So I got the emergency brake in, I had to make a bracket, now I'm plumbing the brakes. We're screwing around with that. I got a set of tires mounted on some rims, so I'll put that on there. So Danny's here holding the camera, so she's gonna leave brakes tonight while I'm cranky. It's been a couple of cranky days, but uh, we'll get that all done. So the brakes will be good. I think I'm gonna, where I cut the quarter, I think I'll put the big tires on. Now that everything's bolted together, and I can put weight on it. I can set it on the ground, I can maybe weld in that piece, which I was gonna ignore or do at some point. So we get that done, uh, yeah, I don't know. Odds and ends, clean up and everything, and then tomorrow all we'll do is slip the drive shaft in and hopefully the rear wheels will turn. So that's exciting. So you get to deal with Grumpy Dan tonight. Yay! Sorry, people. Honestly, they don't actually have to deal with you. It's me. <laughs> yeah. I'm the one who suffers. Send help. Yeah, you get to suffer from my own stupidity, but... You didn't say what you said when I first came in the garage. What did I say? You, to me, measured the drive shaft wrong. Oh, did I say that? That is the words that you said. And I said, pardon? That oh, was my fault. Which is pain. I mean, Ryan did a great job and all that stuff. But we'll give him another plug tomorrow. Again, support your local guy. Just another show of DD hack shop. <laughs> no one should be surprised. Another day, another dollar. But uh, yeah, whatever. All this has to get done. It just, I wanted to... I wanted that little win. Oh, you know what I should do? I was talking to the camera and I almost did it. Not put an end on. That would have been good. That would have been good. Uh, Cause that, this is all the line I have left. So I wouldn't have been able to refinish this line 
Wow, that would have been a real good night. Okay, well, we'll be back when we're bleeding brakes or pushing a broom or who knows what. This is the wrong bag. Bye. Okay, brake bleeding time. Just so we're clear, it's the middle pedal in this one. There's a stick on the right, which is the throttle. And there's two pedals. I knew which one it was. Let's go get in. You're going up. You want to see the thing? How do I do it? On the side. There you go. But, you know, maybe just, uh, I'll put up, get, get a few pumps because I feel like there's probably going to be a loose line. Right now? Pump it? Oh, yeah, pump it. Just like up and down. Nothing is leaking yet. Can you pump it? Uh, no, just up there. Uh, oh, no, we gotta look. Oh. Uh, it's gonna break blue, but oh man. My high proportioning valve is not really gonna be a problem, I thought for sure. That's gonna come back to bite me somehow. It smells weird in this car. It's smelling like brake powder? I don't know what it smells like, it just smells weird. Okay, so go all the way down, back up, down. Yeah. Let it up. Step on it. 
We're shifting a little adjusting, but not bad. Not bad. Did you know there's a bunch of like pigs and stuff and like a... Yeah. Somebody's got to get on that heater. Step on it a few more times to make sure I don't have a leak up here. And that master sure moves a lot. That's crazy. Did I loosen that? Hit it again. Freaking bolt on that. Go again. Son of a bitch. Are you missing something? Yeah, I might be missing another two on the master cylinder. And then your brain? Breaks are done. So here is my plan. We have these tires on. Now I have these. Other ones over here, which are actually slightly taller, but they're narrower, so I think we should be okay. Now I just snip the, where did I put it? Just a little bit off the bottom, of course. Now I have lost the piece that I'll be welding back in. But anyway, I just snipped it. Now I think what I'm gonna do is probably cut kind of from here up to about here, a little triangle out of it. We'll kind of work that over and then weld it back so it has a somewhat of the same shape. This is your classic Chevy. So I mean, any of you Chevy truck guys know um, Chevy wheel openings after like 72 or whatever are square. So obviously you run into issues at the very bottom um, versus a round wheel well, but what are you gonna do? It does look cool. So we'll uh, mess with that, get it kind of tacked back together. We're just gonna roughly cut weld, nothing too fancy. Well, from there, so I'm gonna crank on some tunes. Try not to cut the tire. So there we go. I could use definitely a little bit of body filler, but uh, you know, I can fit my thumb between it and at the very lowest point. And obviously the weight is off. So rear end is kind of shifted forward as the weight comes up, it actually will go back. So even if we jump this thing, that's all that's gonna happen. Um, we should be pretty good that the, it's hard to see on camera, but the quarters kind of bow out a little which could have been my terrible install, but as it turns out, worked out pretty good now for clearance. So that should be pretty good. I think all we're gonna do is this real quick though. Do a little of that. And we'll deal with that at a future date. I'm gonna put the other tire on, just see how it looks, and I'll probably get the other side welded up real quick. And I think that's it for tonight. So we'll be drop it down the ground with these other wheels and tires when we clean up just for a aesthetic purposes. Honestly, I don't mind these uh, wheels and tires. They're they're tucked in a little, so uh, maybe I'll play with, I've never done it, but like those bolt-on spacers. I know people hate them, but uh, like a one inch spacer or something like that would bring it out a fair bit and uh, maybe make it look a little cooler. The problem I'm running into again, so if we're taking this thing long haul, I don't feel as though these have uh, you know, five or 6,000 miles of highway driving on them. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I think they do. But I think that's all they have. And uh, they're like eight or $900. So to burn a set of tires to go there, if your tires cost more than the fuel, you're doing it wrong. So the problem we're gonna have, we bring these, well then now we're down there, we have to kind of keep these somewhere. So roof rack or in the back or whatever. Anywho, we got that all taken care of. I think it looks good. I, I love Chrome Reverse. My little inner David Newburn. This side I did quite a bit better of a job. <laughs> so I didn't even paint it yet, but uh, that's that. I also started really bouncing on it. I guess I can't put my whole weight on it, but uh, I didn't hit nothing. So I think it's a win. That's where we're going for now. Um, again, so Ryan over at uh, 
Bill Moore Transmission. Man, I love this guy. I'm going to make sure I put a link in the uh, description there. So if you guys are local or uh, semi-local or want to pay some shipping or whatever, this guy makes stuff happen. How many times can you text your drive shaft guy in the evening telling him you're an idiot and you gave him the wrong measurements and he gets back to you and he says, drop it off first thing in the morning, we'll get it taken care of. So I'm going to wake up early, well, before work. I still have one of those pesky day jobs. Drop it off before work for him. I'll go do my thing and then pick it up on the way home, hopefully, and uh, won't slow me down. So I really appreciate that guy. Thanks so much to him. And uh, if you're looking to spend money on the drive shaft, like I said, go there. He also has big truck stuff and all sorts of things there. So go Google it, look it up, and I will uh, see you tomorrow. Oh, I did clean up a little bit in here. One thing I do want to talk about, I've had two friends or friends of friends that have had a house and a shop fire. I know I joke around about welding and all that sort of stuff, and, and you know, but really, once you're done welding, give it a good once over, give it like an hour, make sure you're kind of around. Uh, you know, we have cameras out here, you know, just to kind of check in. I always make sure I check in that before I absolutely put my head down on the pillow because fire can really cause a bunch of issues. So uh, just be careful. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully with a drive shaft that fits. New day. T-shirt weather. First day. Door up. Life's good. Oh, this is the T-shirt. So if you send quick, like, two, three thousand dollars for this t-shirt. Man, they send you a free diff, it's fantastic. But uh, anyways, we got it in, we got oil in it. The drive shaft, you have to kind of sneak in here, darling. But uh, we got it back in, so again, man. Do you know what the drive shaft is? I knew, it's this long thing. So we're good, we got it all bolted in, man. That is, it's, it's such beefy stuff. That, that giant billet yoke, watch your head. And the U-bolts, three eighths. It's crazy. So we got in there. So Ryan again, uh, man, I'll go, I'll put a link there. Uh, Domar trans, man, that guy, uh, rush service on the first one and then double rush service on the redo. So I think this thing should be pretty much ready to kind of fire up and see if the transmission goes in gear and the wheels turn. The brakes might be a little tight. I tried to adjust them yesterday. I might've overdone it. Oh, you know what though? I don't think this has any sort of provision for a throttle linkage. Yeah, I didn't quite get to that. There's a bag in here. That'll happen. Is it supposed to be in here? Yeah, it's for safety. So we're just going to kind of tuck these wires away. There's something there. Maybe I'll just put some bailing wire across it. We're just going to drive it on the stand today and see if it goes into gear. Pretty exciting stuff. Okay, we gotta get a battery. We gotta rob it from the Chevy 2, which, oh yeah, there's a rack cap somewhere. I put one on, I swear. Uh, we'll do that, get this thing running again, get the linkage going, put her in gear and, and roll a few gears in this thing. Oh baby, that's gonna be exciting. Okay, I'm gonna get a battery and we'll uh, be back momentarily. Merch stopped by. So we're gonna try to fire this thing up. I'll go on this side so I can talk at you. Pretty amateur? <laughs> I'm about to be single in a minute. <laughs> Widowed. Um, okay, so we're going to try to fire this thing up and see if the transmission works. This is like all the money together at once. Go, Bob. Oh, look at the linkage real quick. It's hilarious. It's bailing wire. Just in case. Words.
too loud. You gotta wear it muffs, guys. Well, well there you go. Okay, it runs, runs, spins. It did just Woo. die there. I think it needs to learn. Yeah. So, oh, I'm excited. <laughs> we can tell. It didn't make any noises. Yeah. Everything's like yeah. other than the muffler. It might have drowned out a few creaks and cracks there. Oh, well, it would have drowned out anything. My gonna, ears are ringing. Yeah, I gotta put a second set of muffs hey? on it. <laughs> I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna cut the muffler, like cut the pipe there, put a flange, and I put a second muffler we can bolt on. The other thing I want to do is I want to cut the headers right here, and I want to put a flange right out here so I can uncap it and have open headers right at the right there. That's loud enough like this. <laughs> well, if we have a second muffler, I will have that. So we're gonna do that at some point. So now that's we're leaving this video. I think you're watching. So, man, quick, those guys, minty stuff. And then again, you can't say enough time dry in there. <clears throat> so I cut the drive shaft, wrong. He did it in a day, brought it back this morning, said, I'm an idiot, I need another inch taken out. He did it by lunch. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't do that for everybody, just so you know, it costs very a lot of money. But uh, he took care of me, love that guy, and then, uh, yeah. So up next, we're going to wire everything up properly because it's just an absolute nightmare. And I wanted to do everything kind of loose in case we had issues. But uh, a little bit of wiring, i got to put drive shaft loop in, e-brake cable, make the lights all sure they work. Hood latch, kind of feel things. I think we should be able to get around the block in the next video. And then can I, can I tell everybody to like, share, and subscribe? Like, share, and subscribe. Please like, share, and subscribe. Marvelous more recommends. That's right. I recommend. And Two then, thumbs up. so the rest. What of was that, Mer? I still uh... <laughs> a little, little deaf. <laughs> Sounds good though. And then in for inspection and driving. Just that easy. Thanks for watching. And putting up with my incompetence. <laughs> so you measured.